It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a monster Monday presented by DraftKings. It is a new week, and there is a ton of news. So I have booked for today's guest. The greatest news, I don't know how he would describe himself, maybe news curator? Curator is like a museum, right? I don't know. The greatest news guy out there in the NFL right now, at least one of my favorites, and certainly one of the best Twitter handles, at my sports update, Ari Myrov, hopefully I'm pronouncing the last name correctly, will join us momentarily because this is one of the newsiest weeks of the year. There's like more news this week when NFL training camps open than like the last four months combined. Certainly the last couple months combined. Can't wait to talk to Ari about where he came from and how he is so good at what he does and why you guys should frankly all be following him this time of year. It's a new week, which means we'll have new college draft and even money and fantasy feast where I'll do my O-line rankings for fantasy purposes and for real life football purposes as well. It also means new sponsor confirmation email winners. We'll have some new best ball winners for fantasy feast. People that want to be in the best ball against me and Joe over at DraftKings. We'll have a new YouTube shout out, youtube.com. Slash Ross Tucker NFL, new spread the word winner. We get winners every week, and it's crazy easy to be a part of it. All you have to do, at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod, just engage in some way. Like, quite frankly, a lot of people engage with Ari each and every day. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. So this is a first for me because... I didn't even know this guy's name until two weeks ago, and now he's a guest on my show. All I knew is that his Twitter handle, at my sports update, has been very, very valuable for someone with a job like mine, which is talking about the NFL each and every day here on this podcast and various other podcasts as well. So to be able to get Ari Myrov from At My Sports Update on the show this week, which I call News Week in the NFL, is awesome. Ari, it's Ross. Great to meet you, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Ross. I appreciate you bringing me on. You know, it is a very busy week, a lot going on in the NFL. You feel like it's finally starting to heat up. We are, as we record this today on Monday, July 26, we are 45 days away from the season kicking off, 10 days away from a real football game. I know it's a preseason game, but who cares? We want to, we want to watch some games. So here we are, it's getting really close and a lot of stuff is going on. It really is. So all right, I, I want to start with this. Okay. Um, did I pronounce your last name correctly? Um, you know, the way you pronounce it is the way everyone pronounces it at first. But it's really Mayrov, not Myrov. So, um, like the month of May and then Rove. So, um, you know, every time I meet somebody, they say Myrov first. But um, that's the real way of saying it. But it's okay. Don't worry about it. Got it. Okay, Mayrov. Got it. Ari Mayrov. All right. So, what I know about you is following you on social media at my sports update. How long have you been doing this? How did it start? Yeah, so I've been doing this since um, 2013. So it's been a while. But I started really when Twitter wasn't that big. And, you know, I've always been a very big, big-time football fan. Um, growing up, I used to always, you know, track everything that happens around the league. Like, I was always fascinated by the behind the scenes of football, by the whole, you know, free agency and the draft and the salary cap and all those different type of things. And I used to follow everything. And at the time, I remember, like, there was so much going on and it used to come from so many different places that it was impossible for the average fan to keep updated with what's going on around the league, right? If you have work, if you have school or whatever, it's really hard for you to be able to keep up with everything and follow all these different people. So back then I decided, you know, let me try this thing. Let me hop on Twitter. Let me create an account. So I just started gathering all the news 
checking out what's going on. And I started in 2013, in March of 2013, before free agency started that year. And I just started doing it. And, you know, I really enjoyed doing it. I was taking all the news that was going on that year. There were a couple of big trades as well. So I did it for that year. And then I was like, you know, this is going really well. But in reality, for the first two or three, even four years, it really didn't do much. Like there wasn't much of a following. There wasn't much engagement, but I really enjoyed it. And over time, you know, I kept on doing the exact same thing of just posting NFL news that's accurate, that's notable, and the stuff that the average fan wants to know about. And eventually it got to a point where a bunch of players and reporters and agents and, and, and even coaches are started following the account. And I was like, wow, this is actually working. So that's really how it all got started. But, you know, I've always been such a big football fan. And to see it come to this point is absolutely incredible. All right. So, all right, where, like, give us your background. So I get that part of it. But, like, where are you from? Um, all that stuff. How old are you? What school did you go to? Yeah, so um, I'm from New York. I've been in Queens, New York my entire life, actually. And um, I'm in my mid-20s, um, you know, but um, for the most part, I actually started this account, like, late in high school, like, very, very late in high school. So I just started, I decided to make it because I was just a big football fan. And, um, you know, I, I did it throughout throughout that final year of school, and then I just kept on doing it. You know, that's basically how it all started. But, you know, for the most part, like, you know, Growing up, I was always so so into football that, um, you know, I really wanted this to be my my thing, you know, as I grow up, you know, as my passion, I want to make it into my job also. So that's really what I kept on doing on the side. I, I didn't go to college. I actually was doing real estate here in New York. So real estate was the thing that was my main hustle. Football was my side hustle. But in reality, I really had no passion for real estate. So my ultimate goal was to try to make football my main thing. And now, um, recently, I finally accepted an offer to join Pro Football Focus with Chris Collinsworth. And they're starting a news division now. And, um, you know, they were always into data and analytics. Now they're starting a news division that's right up my alley. And um, it's going to be something very, very big over there, hopefully. Okay. So I guess the question is, like, how do you do what you do? And is it only you? Because, you know, it seems like any time – there's news in the NFL, you tweet about it like within 30 seconds or a minute after Schefter or Rappaport or whoever. Yes, that's a great question. You know, it's interesting because, again, I've been doing it for so long that I've figured out exactly a way of knowing where news is coming from and when it's expected to happen. Like, I've, I've really gotten that down over time now. So, for the most part, whenever there's, um, let's just say, during free agency, you know it's, it, it's going to be stuff happening all the time. You know when training camp is happening, I keep a notebook next to me with all the headlines that I know is about to happen or should be happening here in the near future, right? So I kind of have a good idea of where things are happening from, but, you know, I always do my work out of an office or you, you have your phone and you're always on top of everything, but I've basically created a whole algorithm of just knowing where things are coming from. Let's just give you an example of, you know, Drew Brees retiring this offseason. I had a good sense that that most likely will not be reported by anyone, but Drew's going to announce that himself. So what you should be doing is probably going to Drew's Instagram and just being ready for that, turning on his notifications and knowing that it's probably going to come from there. So I've gotten a good sense of where to expect things to come from. I've got a good sense of knowing who are the real reporters out there, who if somebody put something out there, maybe let's just wait a little bit more. So that's really the way I do it. But for the most part, for someone who's been doing it for this long, you kind of already have a good idea of where everything is going to come from. So since doing it since 2013, now we're in 2020, 2021, I've got a pretty good idea of what everything is going to happen. So I called you earlier a curator. Is it fair to say, I think the right word is probably like an aggregator. Is that right? Like you, you aggregate NFL news and then, um, you know, you're able to then – supply it to to your followers in a condensed way from a trusted source rather than following you know 500 different people yeah i think that's a good way of putting it it's like it's like a news hub basically it's a hub where you get all your news in one place instead of following so many different people but you know that's what it's been up until now but over time you know my ultimate goal is to also be able to break stuff on my own that's really what pff is trying to do now where they're adding a news division, they want to get involved in the breaking news game. So 
that's going to be part of it as well. We're going to start having our own stuff as well, hopefully here in the near future. But up until now, for the most part, we've been just a news hub. And it's a one-man show with just me doing the account. I know you asked that before. So it's really just getting everything that's notable for the average fan that you need to know to get ready for football season, when the games are going on, what injuries are happening. You go to the account, you're getting everything there. So that's really what it's been. That's what it's always going to be. Okay, so then, like, how do you go from having notifications turned on for Rap Sheet and Mort and Schefter and Pelissero and aggregating that data and adding your own flavor? How do you go from there to breaking it on your own? Because to break it on your own, you need to be talking with agents and executives, right? 100%. And, you know, what I've been, you know, grateful for is that I've been able to get to know a lot of these insiders and just kind of pick their brains a little bit about how all this works. And over the past, you know, couple of years, I actually had my own podcast, which is right now on a hiatus, but it'll be back very soon. And I got to bring those guys all on and just talk about the, the behind the scenes of what's going on. And I've gotten a pretty good picture of understanding what they do. You know, for the most part, a lot of these insiders, like they know a lot of stuff. They're not a lot of reveal like there's a lot of stuff that whether on tv or whether on radio or whatever it is they're holding it in so there's a lot of information that they're getting that is not being revealed yet so i've got a, a good picture of understanding just how the insider game exactly works where information is coming from if that's an agent that's that's an executive um that's from a coach that's from the player directly i've gotten a good idea of knowing where things come from and eventually yeah you're 100 percent right you're gonna have to be talking to all these people and building those contacts in order to be able to do what they do and that's 100 percent a goal of what i'm trying to do eventually I love it. I love it. I, I, we had, uh, I don't know if you heard, uh, but uh, Mike uh, Garofolo came on and we talked to him and I say his last name wrong every time, by the way, it's like a running joke. Um, but he came on and it was really interesting. I can't, I think that was this off season at some point, he really dove into, you know, what it's like and, how, you know, he said, why why does this guy always get all the stuff? And it's like, because he gives more than he yeah, takes. Yeah, yeah. So you need to kind of be supplying people with information too, which I think is interesting. What about um, this week versus like the last five months? I mean, I, we talked about it a little bit, but I said earlier, I feel like, I mean, just even over the weekend, but over the next five days, like this week, there's going to be a ton of news. Yeah. yeah, it is. And, you know, these past couple of months have been tough for accounts like mine, right? There's not much going on. There's a lot of people who are just trying to create news like the Aaron Rodgers might opt out. Like, I never believed that, right? But now we're actually getting into some serious stuff where it's actually real reporting. Real stuff is happening. Players have to report. Teams are finally getting back from their summer vacations. Like, right now is, like, the week where – it's going to be full force from here until, you know, the draft, you know, and until ne the next draft. We're going to be having stuff going on like crazy all the time. Like these last two months have been a little bit more quiet. Now we're back into it. Everyone's getting back into gear. Everyone's back into their offices. There's going to be moves happening. There's going to be some trade. There's going to be cuts. There's going to be signings. All those street free agents are starting to sign as well. There's going to be, unfortunately, some injuries. So, yeah, right now we are entering a portion where we're going to have a lot of stuff going on, and that's very exciting, of course. And then, of course, we're going to start having games as well, and that's what we all look forward to. Um, okay, so let's get to a couple of the news items. You know, th this Aaron Rodgers stuff came out Friday evening that sports books are pulling the Packers off the board because I guess they've gotten some information or heard some rumors that Aaron might retire. Um, in your mind, number one, I guess, is that – is that news enough for you to post it to your Twitter? And what's your what are your thoughts on that speculation? Yeah, for me, it wasn't enough to post it just because it wasn't an actual report. It wasn't coming from someone who I would consider is enough reliable for me to put it out, though it is like juicy information, right? So 
for now, throughout this offseason, really, I've been really hesitant to post this Aaron, a lot of this Aaron Rodgers stuff because it's really tough to know exactly where all this is coming from. Like, Aaron has been very quiet. He's had some of his former teammates kind of speak for him. The front office has been quiet for the most part, besides for when Mark Murphy came out and did this letter to the public or whatever it was. You know, so we haven't really heard much. Now, when it, they're going to have their shareholders meeting, for example, today at 12 o'clock Eastern, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, tomorrow they're going to have to report to training camp. That's when I really expect us to start getting some real information and some real reporting on what's actually going on. And I personally believe he's not going to show up to training camp. I think this thing is going to stretch into training camp. Aaron is very strategic. He's very smart. He knows what he's doing. Whatever he's putting out there, for example, on Friday with the the last, the last dance picture of him and Devontae Adams um, posting at the same time. I think all of that is being done strategically, and there is a plan behind it. There really is. I don't think he's showing up to training camp. I think this is going to stretch until the very end, and he does not want to be there. But, you know, the reality is that the Packers don't want to trade him, and they have a Super Bowl-ready team. So that's where it gets really complicated. But Aaron wants to get out of there in a way where he doesn't become the villain there the way Brett Favre was when he left he wants to leave there where it's basically hey it's not my fault that I'm leaving there it's the front office's fault they're the reason I don't want to be here so don't blame me and he wants to get out of there but they don't want to trade him so they're kind of really really stuck right now and it's kind of shocking to me that people think money could solve this money is not solving this Aaron has enough money like money is great for sure but there is something bigger here that has not been reported yet. There's more to this that we have not heard about. So it's really a wait and see until we get some more information on this because there's a really big thing right now that's just missing in this story. Like there's something happened there besides for Jordan Love, besides for all that. There's something else over here that we haven't heard about. Something happened there. We don't know what it is. And eventually, now that we're getting back into camp, we're getting back into full swing, we're going to get more information about this, and it's really going to heat up. So we'll see what happens. All right. What about the Deshaun Watson news this morning that, you know, he is he has reported training camp yesterday and that he is available via trade? I've been around long enough already, 20 years now, going back to my rookie year, that uh, – it's just kind of funny to me when I see, you know, uh, all like multiple reporters saying he's available, but it's going to take a lot. You're going to have to do three first round picks. You're going to, can you do me a favor? Like if you become an insider, like you will, can you not like carry the water for these? Can you not like obviously be just regurgitating what a team wants you to regurgitate? Yeah, so everything that came out this morning is coming directly out of the Texans front office. It's coming. Um, some of it might be coming from his agent as well, David Mulligano. For the most part, this is like they're trying to get this thing moving. But the reality is over here as well, I don't see the Texans trading him until they're able to get that full maximum value that Deshaun Watson is worth. So until this legal situation is solved, it's a hard it's hard for me to see a team giving up those three first round picks and giving up a young defensive player or whatever else Houston wants. This legal situation has to be solved. People are asking why do you show up to training camp? Well, under the new CBA, if you're not there, you're getting fined every day fifty thousand dollars. And unlike the previous CBA, there's no waving those fines off. So Deshaun is not gonna lose his money. He's gonna be there, but he does not want to be there and play there. That's the reality of the whole thing. But until the legal situation is solved, the Texans are not gonna trade him unless the team is actually willing to give up multiple first round picks plus more in exchange for a young star quarterback in his mid twenties on a long-term contract. It's not gonna happen unless they're able to get the full value. So for now, the Texans are letting people know, hey, this is what it's gonna take, but other teams who might be interested, like a Philadelphia or like a Miami, let's just say, they're gonna have to wait just to see exactly what happened in the legal situation. Even if he just gets suspended and everything else legally is cleared, I think teams will be fine trading for him because he is a a young quarterback on a contract that's a long-term contract. You'll have him for the next 10 or 12 years. That's what you're trading for. You're not trading him, trading for him for just four games or six games this year. You're trading for him for the next 12 plus years. So the Texans are, are, are basically what they've done this offseason. They've already sent the message that they are moving on, right? They signed Tyrod Taylor. They drafted um, Mills with their first pick in the draft in the third round. They gave, um, Jeff Driscoll guaranteed money to sign there. So they've already moved on as well. It's just now a wait and see until they're able to get the full maximum value that Deshaun Watson is worth. 
You got to check out this man on social media at my sports update. Look, the, what I like about Ari and what you just heard, okay, is yes, he aggregates from all the different news sources, but also he he doesn't just post everything. He is, you know, he he takes a discerning eye at what he thinks is really news and really worth posting versus not really news and not worth posting. Uh, you know, Ari, I have so much respect for people that do it the way you did it. Nobody knew you. You came from nowhere. You're a kid in Queens that just had a passion and started tweeting about it. And for four or five years, you were basically just tweeting for yourself or tweeting to yourself. You didn't have people following you. And now you got a job with Pro Football Focus. That is the American dream, dude. I love it. I love when people work with, for no money. I mean, you've basically gotten like no money for a bunch of years for this, right? Yeah, basically. I, I did it for nothing. You know, I was just running a Twitter account, but I was also doing real estate on the side. So that was really my main thing. But, you know, the entire time I had my phone on me, I was near a computer. I was following every little thing that was going on in football. I had it in the back of my mind. I knew everything that's going on and whatever was notable was going on on the Twitter account. And as I said, eventually it just blew up in 2016, I believe it was. And now here we are. I have a job at Pro Football Focus. And now it's my full time job. That's that's just amazing. Check him out on Twitter at my sports update. Thank you so much, Ari, for coming on the show. Appreciate your ass. Thanks. There he is, Ari Mayrov. Now that I know how to say his last name, I've always known what to wear on my feet. Crocs. I love Crocs. Look, Crocs are hot right now. Whether you know it or not, they are. I wear Crocs. I've got the sliders, the slip ons. My brother in law. Texted me a picture of rocking the Croc sliders over the weekend. He loves them. I wear them indoors. I have an indoor pair. I have an outdoor pair. Here's the deal. Speaking of how awesome Crocs are, by the way, the Crocs Hoops Draft Prediction Challenge is coming. And dare we say free to play on DraftKings.com. This is the like, this is this is an epiphany for me. We're combining DraftKings and Crocs. Make all the right picks, and a slice of 10 Gs could be yours. Just enter the game page on draft day and see just how well your pick predictions hold up to the real ones. At the end of the draft, winners will be paid out cold, hard cash based on how many you guessed right. Visit DraftKings.com slash Crocs on Thursday, July 29th to make your basketball draft predictions. We hope your future is full of comfort and possibly full of money. Learn more at DraftKings.com slash Crocs. Ducks takes. Good morning, Ross. You touched on it with Ari, but let's get your thoughts on all the Aaron Rodgers news over the last couple of days. So I don't believe he's going to retire. Uh, obviously the retirement thing is just a tool. He, he doesn't want to stop playing football. So the retirement thing would be just basically doing a Carson Palmer where you say you're retiring uh, until they trade you. But the problem is they don't have to do it and they can come after your money. I personally, and I might be wrong, and we'll talk to Andrew on Wednesday about this, I might be wrong. I think this this news leak, this rumor that somehow got to the sports books, I think the rumor is out there because Aaron Rodgers and his representatives want it to be out there. And I personally believe that this is sort of the last negotiating ploy, if you will, before the start of training camp. Ducks takes. Got some wide receiver news, including another Packer and Devontae Adams unhappy in breaking off contract talks. Saints wide receiver Michael Thomas having ankle surgery in June. Bears trading Anthony Miller to the Texans and D.D. Westbrook signs in Minnesota. 
Yeah, I mean, D.D. Westbrook, it's a good pl- I, I guess it's a good place to go and try to be a third receiver with Thielen and Jefferson there in Minnesota. You're going to get a lot of single coverage. As for Anthony Miller of the Texans, we're actually talking about this on uh, with the patrons, patreon.com slash RT Media, the diehard tuckheads. I, I don't know what happened there in Chicago. His rookie year, now I know he got hurt. And never really recovered. But his rookie year, Bri, he did some really good things, some really positive things. And then he got hurt, and it was like he fell out of favor. And they, like he got in the doghouse and never got out. I don't know if he doesn't know what he's doing or if it's an attitude thing. I don't know what's going on there. Devontae Adams, look, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins makes $5 million more per year than any other wide receiver. Uh, that was because his contract had three more years on it. So that new money average is for four and five years from now that he gets that. So I can understand why teams are like, yeah, we're not giving that to you now. That's not what the market is now. That's what the market is when DeAndre Hopkins' original contract with the Texans expires. Then it tax on that those those averages per year. So that's an interesting situation. Look, there's lots of guys. Chandler Jones wants a trade, wants more money. So Darius Smith isn't happy with his contract. Like, there's lots of guys that aren't happy with their contract. That's normal this time of year. Let's see whether any of them don't show up or not, because it's 50K a day mandatory if you don't. As for Michael Thomas, your Saints down there, Bri, this is bad. I mean, he's going to be out. Uh, you would think at least the first couple months of the season. And I don't know why on earth he waited till June to have the surgery. I totally get, let's see if it heals on its own. Let's see if I don't need the surgery. But as Dr. Chow wrote, and I and I agree, you got to make a decision at some point. I mean, you, you got to you gotta say, okay, it didn't work. I mean, I, I had my back surgery in April so that I was ready to go for the first day of training camp. You know, Michael Thomas isn't even going to be ready to go for the start of the season. Tux takes. Some NFL news out of the state of Texas. Cowboys signing Malik Hooker, defensive end Demarcus Lawrence, undergoing back surgery this offseason, and Deshaun Watson reporting to Houston Texans for training camp. So, you know, Demarcus Lawrence, um, that is, that's bad. Um, because I didn't realize, Brian, maybe I missed this. Maybe I wasn't following Ari at the time, but I didn't know Demarcus Lawrence had back surgery. Brian, that's that's a bad look, man. It's a bad look. I don't know anybody. The two things I'll always say, I don't know anybody that ever used to have a bad back. They still have a bad back afterwards. And I also don't know anybody who felt like they were a better player after back surgery. Now, maybe it was bothering him last year, and so maybe he can be better than he was last year, but I don't envision him ever getting back to the player that he was after a back surgery, and that's primarily speaking from my own experience. And then as for the Deshaun Watson stuff, yeah, man, it is heating up. I thought Ari made a really good point. If you're the Texans... You want to get maximum value in return for this asset you have. The problem is the legal situation really clouds that. Is a team going to give you what what the value should be for Deshaun with this legal situation hanging over their head? I doubt it. And by the way, if you're one of these rumored interested teams, the Eagles or the Dolphins or Broncos, whoever, are you going to give up? Everything that the Texans want with the legal situation hanging over your heads, it's a tough spot to be in for these for, for really both sides. It would be nice if they had some clarity on the legal situation, but they don't. Tux takes. And lastly, the Minnesota Vikings reportedly cut ties with O-line coach Rick Dennison over his refusal to get vaccinated. And the Patriots are going to be without the services of Cole Popovich as well. Right. So I guess I saw another report that now Dennison and the Vikings are still talking, but it sounded like they were going to let him go. 
they need an offensive line coach that can coach their players. And with the NFL's rules, if you're not vaccinated, you can't coach them in person. So what good are you? And I know that frustrates some people out there that are opposed to the vaccine, but that's what the NFL came up with. And so the teams have to play by those rules. I guess Cole Popovich maybe is in the same category as well with New England. I don't know. Um, a couple other notes, by the way, Bri. Bunch of players being put in the COVID-19 list by various teams. So I guess they're coming to camp and they have it. Jeremiah Wusu koromoa the second-round pick for the Browns. Uh, big signing this morning, or maybe it was last night, the Eagles signed cornerback Steve Nelson to play opposite Darius Slay. Steve's been a very solid corner for a long time in the NFL. That's a big signing by the Eagles. And proves once again, by the way, that they are going all in to try to win this year. I think people looked at it like transition year. No, no, no. They're trying to win this year. They're just trying to make sure they have maximum flexibility for 2022 and beyond. And then the Bengals gave DN Sam Hubbard a four-year, $40 million extension. College draft this week will be tomorrow, as will the Even Money podcast. Should have Andrew Brandt later in the week here on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. I am giving you my O-line rankings on the Fantasy Feast. You'll love those. Shout out to Pizza Boy Brewing. Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, and HumanHeadNYC.com. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109WITHIT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 